<laughs> That's what I can understand. But what they did with Woodstock, that song by Joni Mitchell, what they did with it was they brought it to a whole other level. Well, you know this was how that song came about, right? No. Oh, well, you know, I was supposed to play Woodstock, as you may have known. And um, my uh, manager at the time, a uh, long dead guy now, <laughs> uh, he missed the turn to the hellport. We were following Michael Lang's car. This is all in my book. Michael Lang was who uh, got the, who started Woodstock. It was a dream of Michael's. We were all kind of a, a little small group of people that hung out together, and and uh, we encouraged him to make his dream come true, and and he did. But because uh, Teddy, that was the manager, missed the turn, even though because a car or two, I don't know, got in between us and and Michael's car, and, and he, he, him and Hector Morales, he was the agent that helped put Woodstock together by, uh, he was an agent for William Morris and helped to book the acts that got the attention of other acts because they were larger acts, you know, how that works. And, um, so him and uh, Michael, we, we lost sight of them because of the car in between. And back then, you know, we didn't have cell phones, <laughs> unfortunately. So um, we ended up driving in with the masses. And by the time we got there, it was nighttime. <laughs> and it was Friday. I was supposed to sing that day. And um, they, uh, we, we saw the lights were still on the stage. So me and Teddy were like running it across the, the mud trying to get to the stage in time that maybe there's still a chance I can play. <laughs> and I was dressed all in like white with, uh, and uh, trying to keep the mud from getting on me. And, and I saw that there was uh, people sleeping in their sleeping bags in the parking lot by the cars with the mud. I went, oh my God, these people are going to get run over in the morning. You know, people won't, oh, won't see them there. And sure enough, somebody did actually. Uh, die that way but uh meanwhile we were running and and as we're running towards the stage uh the lights go out it was uh, john Baez singing the last chorus the last song of his, of his set last set of the night <laughs> and you know the crowd uh applauded and, and and then the lights went out and that was the end of that night oh. and, the, and 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 the lights went out on my career <laughs> No, that's not true. You're still a well, very valuable artist. Yeah, but I could have been a famous dead one. Like, if I had played this <laughs> part, <could>, you know, <laughs> I said, <laughs> I'm the secret diva. If I said I could have been the dead diva. You know, I, really, I, I believe that not playing which time probably lessened my life. <laughs> because um, I had no restraint back then. And I had no fear. And whatever would have come my way... And not a lot more would come my way, you know, uh, unlimited funds, uh, unlimited substances. Oh, you know, that's why these people died so young, because they had too much freedom. I have a poem about that, too much freedom. Who would believe that we could become the victims of too much freedom? And uh, that's what happened here. But not to me, because <laughs> um, I remained obscure and poor. <laughs> well, not exactly poor, but, you know, uh, not far away from it. <laughs> now, is your always book... A step, always, always a step away. <laughs> is your book The Secret Diva? It's a, It's called Tales of the Secret Diva. Oh, I love it. I love uh, the title. I'm about... Thank you. And it's got all this, that in it. And So anyway, I got back to L.A. And Joni uh, lived on Lookout. I lived on Red Pants. We both lived in the wrong canyon, and we were buddies, and... She uh, came over, and I told her all about Woodstock and our people all being there and how beautiful it was. Uh, I didn't really talk about me not getting to play. I never really thought too much negatively. I've always been a kind of positive person, uh, except if you anger me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but seriously... Um, you know, I always try to look at the bright side of everything, and it was too... Negatively, I've always been a kind of positive person, uh, except if you anger me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but seriously, um, you know, I always try to look at the bright side of everything, and it was too bright and beautiful, uh, Woodstock, uh, it was, with all the mud, and it didn't matter, we were all there, 
and we all had the same wonderful idea of, of uh, peace on earth and loving one another and and, and uh, it was a, it was a great event and I'm glad I was there even if I I couldn't um, uh, perform so because uh, they said that uh, Saturday was a uh, band day and they wouldn't let and solo day was Friday and since I missed Friday they wouldn't let me. <sighs> so. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, I was telling Jenny all about the, the Wondrous uh, uh, Festival, and she came back the next day, and um, she sat down at my piano, and she said, I wrote this from your music, and she played Woodstock. She had just written it. So basically, truth be told, I, I was the inspiration behind that song. People want to claim otherwise, but that's the, the honest to goodness truth. And um, and that's the way it went down. And of course, beautiful song. Happy to have inspired it. It was from not just my music, although you may recognize some of my kind of harmonies in there. Uh, but it was also from from my ideas and and, and what um, I said to her, which was almost like reading a poem to her when I got back from Woodstock. It might have been a poem. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, I'm always writing poems about everything that I experience. Now, did you and Joni hang true. out? Did you and Joni hang yeah. out at Woodstock? Yeah, we, yeah, we, uh, you know, I'd sing for her, she'd sing for me, and, um, you know, I'd play some for her, she'd play some for me, and uh, same thing with Jackson Brown, we used to play for each other, and we were, we hung out together, and we're, we're, we're still friends, and, um, but at any rate, with, um, with, uh, Joni, I would say to her, you know, you have really great pipes, Joni. You, you can do a lot more than just sing the notes. And I taught her about uh, stretching out and and jamming with her voice and, and uh, letting it be free. And uh, I said, you know what, just uh, sing along freely with, get some, you know, good musicians and, and just jam with them vocally, because that's what I do. And uh, sure enough, she kind of took it too literally. She went straight to the jazz. You know, I said, you know, jazz musicians, but I didn't mean to sing jazz. I meant to be more creative than that. Not that jazz isn't creative, but to the outside of any genre, which I remain. <laughs> so um, anyway, I always say that if it wasn't for my influence, Joni would have been a lot bigger. Oh, that's too funny. <laughs> I sent her in a... You know, an esoteric direction. I didn't. I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, she was a lot more commercial till I came along. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I hope she's doing okay. Well, you know, um, there's a further story with this, and um, she she did something really bad uh, to me, and I'm not going to talk about it because it'll be in my book. But I mean, right Everybody, now she's ill. Uh, she's ill right now, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, I, I hope she comes through because I, I really would love to resolve the issue with her. Is that I'm that I mean I'm all for peace, and uh, and uh, I'm not a vengeful person, but I do notice that cause and effect. The law of karma is not something that anybody can escape. Truly, and. You know, but there are good vibes out there, and Woodstock's a good vibe. And let us, you know, uh, to me, it's it's just a, a, a tremendous, tremendous performance by CSNY. And you've heard that it's like a different, different version on the movie soundtrack, of course. I don't know. I, I flew home with uh, this, uh, CSN and the manager who, who's mine for a while, Elliot Roberts. Oh, Elliot Roberts. Well, he's no longer yeah. with us. Oh, did he die? No, no. I thought you said your manager had passed on. Your other manager. Uh, maybe I misheard you. Teddy True, yeah. Oh, yeah okay. Teddy, Teddy True uh, OD'd uh, two years after that. Oh, and, so sorry. Yeah, oh. he was only 25, yeah. Oh, my God. Very sad, very sad. I'll tell you, it's a deep story. All of it. It's all in my book. <laughs> You'll be able to read all about it, but I don't mind telling you some of it here and now. Well, we, oh, can't wait. Way, we can't wait for the Ask Esther show. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's coming. And also, there's a special TV show that's aired locally in Santa Barbara. It starts next month in September. Santa Barbara SBTV, Channel 17. So 
so uh, that should be cool. And that's going to be, um, I'm not sure, so maybe once a week for the entire year. We will uh, be, and, and who knows what happens beyond that. Let's just live that long, right? <laughs> So, um, and then that's the same person, my uh, new manager, Joey Mo, uh, put that together and, is put, and has the uh, Ask Astra radio show awaiting me to get what we talked about last week, that uh, phone with the cord. 